Hey, what's up, YouTube? Surreal Canine here. Welcome back for more Disguise 4 Promise Revisited. Yeah. The last set of the uh, character demos we did were for half of the DLC characters. In this episode, we are going to show off the other half, starting with Gig. The, uh. One of the uh, protagonists, I guess, of Soul Nomad and the World Eaters. Master of Death, huh? Yeah. As you can see, uh, he is a monster type unit that magic changes to a sword. Jet Black Sword boosts his equipment aptitude during a magic change or fusion. That's pretty cool. Best Buds increases member stats when he's the leader in an evil area. Gig Power Injection uh, can be placed onto other units, and their stats will increase by 20% of Gig's stats. I could see that coming in handy in a few situations. <coughs> 140% attack aptitude makes him uh, very much a physical unit. As for his other ability, he doesn't have one. <laughs> oh well. Can't all be winners. Let's go check him out. Bring it! It's very, uh, very slouch of villainy kind of going on here. It helps when you can just kind of float. Witness my power. Wow. Just uh, kind of got that scythe thing going. Another dimension. D class. Get ready for this. Now do it! A crazy move by a world leader named Fien. Now let's check out his magic change skills. Excuse me. It's a very uh, ominous looking black sword here. Demon Force, D class. Okay. Demon Blast, it's double S class. Day. <laughs> you had to interrupt, Kyoko. Well, whatever. Alright. 
Now that that's out of the way, let's move on to Kyoko and Asuka. They're down here. Academy Delinquent. Kyoko is, uh, is a kunoichi. She uses fists, swords, and stabs, uh, learning six each of the fist and sword skills, as well as these spells Stun, Slumber, and Charm. Uh, her aptitudes uh, favor fists. And Barrel Servant 1. Evasion up 50% when adjacent to Barrel. Pretty cool. White Lily Dance increases her speed when she's at maximum HP. So, uh... In the post game, pretty much only for the uh, first hit she does. <laughs> Unless you got a healer out, I guess. Oh well. As for her other ability, let's go, my lady. When next to Kyoko, Razbarrel's attack is increased by 10%, or, you know, whoever you want to put this on. Can just kind of uh, make a whole bunch of barrel uh, uh, delinquent groupies. Just uh, buff her to oblivion. We also have Asuka Crane Kick. Another uh, delinquent. Barrel Servant 2 increases her attack by 50% when she's next to Barrel. Nadeshko's form raises her attack power when HP is max. And... Fight, my lady! Raises Barrel's evasion by 5% when... Uh... I wonder if these uh, were gotten backwards. Seems like maybe it's possible. Anyway... Asuka uses swords and spears, learning six sword skills and five spear skills, as well as five bow skills. Her uh, her abilities appear, to, or her aptitudes appear to favor swords, although eh, she's just as good with a bow, I guess. <sighs> Sorry about that. It is pretty late at night. Let's bring them both into battle and see what's up. <coughs> Here I go. Lily Elegy. F class. Won't you pull the crane? Crane Dance, also F class. Alright, sorry Asuka, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. <laughs> Crane Dance. up we have Lily Duet and crane paper crane copter which uh, I can't actually reach with anybody right now Very, uh, very arts and crafts seemed, uh, attacks here. What? Why can't I move? Come on, Asuka. Hmm. 
All right, anyway. Paper Crane Copter, another D-class attack. <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. Not just anybody who can use their, uh, their own handiwork for uh, shenanigans like that. Lily Solo. Ooh, seven, and it inflicts paralysis. Both of these inflict paralysis, huh? Ninja traps, gotta love them. Grace Crane Change. Paper Airplane! <laughs> That is these two. Alright, next up, we have another familiar face. We've got Oracle Pram from Makai Kingdom. She's uh she's very much an ice type uh, using mage here. Although she also learns four bow spells. She learn spells, yes, yeah, skills. She learns six tiers of ice spells and five tiers of star spells. Prophecy uh, changes her ability effects at random at the end of the turn. Uh, future me, if you could go and uh, post all the different things she can do, that would, I would appreciate that. Absolute zero uh, decreases adjacent enemies' res by 50%, so uh, she's definitely an up-close-and-personal type of caster. And as you can see, she's got a very high uh, intelligence aptitude to go with it. Her other ability, Reverse Harem, uh, raises her stats by 5% uh, per male ally, but only when all the other characters are male. At least I assume it works. At least I assume it's allies. We're gonna have to uh, bring her into the place and see if that's accurate. Yeah, okay. I guess it is only allies. Anyway, we've got Saint Bouquet. No one has the right to take my toys away. Ice Mirror. It's uh, something you might see in Kingdom Hearts 3, I don't know. The old Ice Labyrinth, and uh, just going all Phantom Ganon on us. Phantom Ganon and Xemnas! <laughs> oh man. Pretty crazy. Frost Dragon. Probably all Ice type. I maybe should have looked at that. By the way, uh, Pram has an absurdly high Ice affinity. So 
So, uh, yeah. And actually, maybe I should go see if, uh, if she has another ability, because I would be surprised if she does not. I would be, in fact, very surprised if not you. Eh, yeah. Okay, I guess. Anyway, Pram. Yes, all of your uh, unique skills are ice type. And yeah, look at that. 99% ice affinity. And both of the others are positive too, which is uh, really something. Next up, uh, we got some characters from side... We got some other characters from side games. First up, Nisa. A, uh, an ally character in uh, Hyper Dimension Neptunia. But only the original. She is not present in Rebirth, sadly. She uses fists, swords, and guns, earning six fist skills and five sword and gun skills. Her aptitudes uh, favor fists, apparently, although she could also do pretty well with a sword or a gun. You know, it's a thing. Nippon Ichi increases her stats by 1% for every 10 hours of this guy of 4 played. Flat Alliance raises her stats by 10% times the number of flat characters in the evil area. Just uh, any uh, female character that does not have big boobs, I guess. Let's check out the data shop and see uh, just how long we've been playing this guy for. 199 hours, uh, coming up pretty quickly on 200. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty great. So, uh, yeah. Check out Nisa's other ability. Pinch Revival. When healed, stats increase based on percentage of max HP healed. I think, uh, I think this is an ability that, uh, Flan gets in Disgaea 5. I don't remember for sure, though. It's been a little bit since I've played Disgaea 5. Anyway. Let's take her into the, uh, into the, uh, test bed, and we'll see exactly what she's capable of. Yeah, see? Stats plus 19%. <laughs> I mean, if you basically left this on for a really long time, that would be, uh, something. Yeah. E. Watch the Legend of the Hero. Also... She's dabbing. <laughs> Make of that what you will. Dark Cross Slash. B class, apparently. The Dark Nether Sword is a forbidden power used for justice. That wasn't an X at the end. That was an asterisk. <laughs> she gonna is she gonna learn everybody else's jobs? Is that what's going on here, game? Nisa. But you gotta say it real slowly. What a weird area of effect. Uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of Hyper Dimension. Oh no, she unleashed the power of the kanji for sun. <laughs> oh, yeah! Nippon Ichi! There we go. Yeah, man! 
<laughs> That's great. No wonder it had such a weird area of effect. It was kanji shaped. Nisa, you are pretty cool. Alright, moving on here. We got Morona, the protagonist of Phantom Brave. Uh, she's definitely a healing type character. Uh, she's got 140% int and res aptitudes and only 110% attack. <clears throat> uh, you can kind of see here, she can learn six spear skills, although her uh, main forte is healing, with uh, six healing spells as well as espoir. Phantom Lover increases her allies when spirits are present. Confine makes Ash possess an object and enter battle. Uh... We might have to see a little later on what that does. Magic change boost increases stats by 10% per personal magic change this battle. Uh, could come in handy, I guess, although you're gonna need to uh, find a way to shorten her magic changes somehow. Ash is uh, Morona's guardian in Phantom Brave. He's got 140% attack aptitude, and he likes swords and axes, learning uh, 6 sword skills plus the tier 9 and 6 axe skills. His only mission is for, to protect Morona. Ikarlet is the uh, Japanese variant on his Solemn Oath ability from his original game. Stats increased by 100% on last turn of a magic change. Phantom Boost increases his stats by 50%. He, uh, it can't be put on anybody else, apparently. It's unique to Ash. His other ability, Water Dragon Power. Which, uh, yeah. I'm surprised Pran didn't get that, but okay. Ash gets the uh, fourth set of Element Boost abilities. Let's not take them into uh, into battle over there. Let's take them into battle over here. I'm fairly confident one of these is going to have a tombstone we can use. Uh, yes. Alright, Morona, do your thing. We're going to confine Ash. As you can see, he got a he got a stat boost there. So let's check out their unique skills. Hi, Water Dragon Slash, E Class, Ice Type. Grant me the power to destroy my foes. The power of the water dragon. There you go. <laughs> Morona gets Heliotrope. May a true path shine forth in justice. Where do you get off surviving with a thousand HP? That was Raphael's signature move in Phantom Brave. Pretty cool. Water Dragon Power. Give me the power to defeat the darkest evil. Uh, let's see here. That'll work. Cool. He never got that in Phantom Brave, at least uh, what I can remember. <laughs> Pretty rude fellows going on here. Psycho Burgundy, Walnut, and uh, and Scarlet the Brave signature move in Phantom Brave. Try! 
She's uh she's definitely using the Rio school of uh <laughs> of confining here. Fox will be pretty happy to see that. Super Rising Dragon! S-Class. Let's see what it does. Leaves us with one skill for Morona. Chartreuse! B class, evidently. This is Morona's personal uh, skill. number triple seven. Alright, let's uh... Let's get some friends out here to uh, help clean up. Val, that means you. There we go. Alright, our final DLC character is... Drumroll, please. Can't actually menu while I'm doing that. <laughs> it's Pirohiko Ichimonji, the Unlosing Ranger. He is a side character in Zetai Hero Project, Unlosing Ranger vs. Dark Death Evil Man. <laughs> kind of a long title, but uh, I would not have it any other way. On losing mode, stats increase by 50% when activated. Pretty sweet. 130% uh, attack and speed attitudes, which fit with his weapon fortes. He learns 6 fist skills and 4 each of the spear and axe skills, as well as the ninth tier spear and axe skills. Yeah, he just does not learn the 5th and 6th skills, apparently. Go figure. Human modification. Increase attack and int by 30% of base, defense, and res. That's pretty neat. His other ability is attack chance. Extra attack when attacking an enemy's weak, weak element. I'm assuming it's not add one to his attack stat, because that it would just be uh, pretty dumb. <laughs> Let's go check it out. Way of the hero. Unlosing mode. Yeah. Fist of he only has a one skill? Really? Way of the hero. That can't be right. Am I missing something? Way of the hero. I guess he only has the one skill. <laughs> Alright, uh, Valatorez, let's just get out of here. For an unlosing ranger, uh, you are kind of the loser here. Yeah. So, that is all of the unique characters in the game, which means the rest of this uh, these character demos are going to be generic classes. I hope to see you all then. Bye bye for now.